Hello, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to another session of the VJ Hour. Uh, I'm happy to see everyone that joined uh, this Thursday. I want to welcome my special guest today, uh, who is Valida Baba. She's a film director, a writer, a poet from Azerbaijan. Um, basically, she followed her heart and switched from business administration to arts by pursuing her studies at the Film and TV School of the Academy of Performance, Performing Arts in Prague and also at the Anglo-American University in Prague. She worked at the Arca Theater in Prague as a director assistant for different projects, as well as a script supervisor for independent short films in the Czech Republic. She has a number of awards already in her palmares. Uh, in 2012, she received the Poetic Film Award for her experimental film, Frogs, and author's unique vision for the film circulation, 2013-2018, both awarded in Baku. Uh, in her latest work, Did I Ever Tell You, which was shot in 2020, uh, the, the, the short film was screened at the Young Director Award. Uh, it also participated at the 11th Baku International Short Film Festival and also has been selected to be part of the Lacuna Festival's 2021 International Contemporary Art, Art Festival. And I can go on with the list of awards, but uh, I'll be happy to hand it over to uh, Valida and to welcome uh, Valida to the show. How are you? Uh, thank you very much for the invitation and uh, I'm really happy to be here. It's like so um, nice opportunity to share like uh, some something what I dare so something uh, for me it's important and it's also it's just a beautiful opportunity to be here because it's like always quarantine lockdown one after another one so at least we can somehow be live and connect with others so for me it's really uh, I'm really happy to be here so I'm looking forward for this uh, talk and what will happen you know during this conversation so I'm I'm more excited yeah, yeah go ahead all the people who are joining tonight with us so welcome and looking forward to hear your questions or if you have some in future so welcome absolutely absolutely thank you for for uh, for accepting my invitation and i look forward as well to this amazing discussion so i think a lot of people would be interested and to know how did you transition from business administration to arts right this is like completely opposite <laughs> how when did you understand that you want to make this transition and uh, what determined you you know to to make this step yeah i mean um the transition i think went very um, after my graduation from business administration i was working for humanitarian uh, organization for some time and um, there was a chance like to go to the villages and one of the my responsibilities was to make photography for this um, uh, for this project so when we were on the one of the project we went to the villages and uh, i think there was happening some magic because um, <laughs> I was with my camera and with these all the people from different villages and I was photographing them and I was like living in different temporality for a while and I was really enjoying this form of communication like a kindness shared experience of um, something mystical you know so I was very happy and I was uh, that time thought maybe I should go and um, Maybe I should go and deepen my knowledge on photography because it's something really uh, important to me and I don't really count timing there. It's just like somewhere I went and then something beautiful comes out. So I decided on that time to apply um, PAMU and then uh, I just like somehow happened that I was accepted at FAMU and then I arrived to Prague and it was like wow this is this is very interesting 
uh, because uh, business administ I studied business administration and uh, in business school there is like completely different attitude and different form of education you know in our yeah. schools are completely you can feel the art you know and everyone like creative they're doing their what is in their mind but for me it was like first thing that I felt like okay this is something interesting this maybe I'm on the right path but the thing was when I arrived to FAMU to study documentary photography at that time uh, I was studying at like short term prog short study program where if I wished I could continue with different like different study programs but I was free to take any uh, courses from depart different departments but mm -hmm. on that time I really felt more close to cinema and I was like I have outgrown the photography actually it was like it was some journey which transferred itself to the different uh, more to the cinema and there my and the different journey was started you know it's it was like something different world opened for me to the arts you know so it seems like you like experimenting so experimented with photography and then you understood that cinema cinematography is more suitable and that's completely fine right <laughs> yeah i mean yes i mean it's like uh, i i learn by experimenting what is important and what is was important not now and how i need or i would like to continue and uh, on that time i also find that okay i have a vision but i need to fulfill different parts of the making films which is you know, script writing content like literature so then i switched to another university i <laughs> went to study ma degree on humanities at anglo-american university but i still will come back several times uh, to FAMU to study different programs, courses, like to take different courses while I will feel, okay, it's done, you know, my <laughs> education is done there. So next is just to do what I think is good for me for my next level, you know. So the studies in FAMU, it seems like it was a new stage in your life. How did the studies in uh, at this particular institution shape your career and vision as an, ar as, uh, as an artist? Um, this is a very interesting question because um, being at, uh, you know, it was like very uh, interesting experience to be in art school in a way that you see different artworks also, but it's also uh, for me important was like uh, discussions and during the seminars of films you know we were watching a lot of films which i love and then it's like you understand there's a school for that like or there was like you can you are free but when you feel because sometimes we don't need to go to the university we can just watch and there's a lot of director was which um, became famous just by watching films you know they didn't go to the school you know so it's different it depends but for me like watching every day and then discussing about them and then i was so fascinated writing about them like we lost valida for a second but it was like yeah no you're back so, you're back i mean i was telling that um watching films uh, and then uh, like a few seconds before okay. she's back with us are we, yeah are we, live? we are live <laughs> and we are waiting for you to come back so valida is uh, basically explaining how the studies in uh, at the faculty um, of arts in in prague has shaped her uh, vision as an artist so some technical issues on the in the background but that will not stop us from continuing this session Waiting for Valita to come back.
Can you? I'm sorry. I can hear you now. Welcome back. <laughs> it's technology. It's always something happens. I know. So Most importantly, that you are back. <laughs> go yeah, on. I'm go back. ahead. Yes, I'm back. And um, what was the question <laughs> last? Oh, it's like, a, oh yeah what shaped the vision. my vision uh, when with hmm? famo like what my studies at famo i think um um like my first beginning of understanding that okay uh, enjoying watching films and then discussing films with uh, professors you know like telling my views or later on writing about these films was really important to me because if I like the artist director's work, so I will go deeper and I will try to analyze to find out like mm, connections in uh, director's films and director's life somehow like deep connection. But uh, then um, there was beautiful chance for me to work for theater in a while with direct different directors and then i was really as a director assistant i was very close with working with different uh, artists i saw that actually they are mostly like projecting their life to their work or talking about themselves sometimes they are aware of this sometimes not really so if i want to understand uh, director's work i need to understand director you know so it was really an interesting dis discover for me that i was like okay so i have to go and discover myself first of all i want to understand like myself my works my vision so this was like really nice time to go deeper to myself and then stop to kind of analyzing others work trying to find you know something magical when you spoke with them they for them it's just like okay <laughs> no <Normal, laughs> you know because sometimes it's just their part which happened their life or sometimes it's like subconscious they don't even aware of this like, mm -hmm. you know, work so for me it was like a really nice experience and i'm really grateful to have this kind of view you know mm -hmm. so i can afterwards like take my uh, own journey you know kind of it's like train you go and meet some people and then afterward you go by your own you know that's interesting and um you know me personally i'm not very familiar with the azeri movie scene what is it representative for oh yeah i mean that's that's really interesting because um when i i was in europe i can say that like i had like a lot of knowledge about you know european american african different cinemas but i didn't have knowledge about azeri cinema it was like i didn't know anything and when i have seen some azeri films it was like in my childhood when i was like my father liked some films or i was uh, passing by i see some films so but uh, thank you for quarantine during the quarantine i was i am in baku now too so i came home and then i just felt this really strong connection that i really want to see other films like classic <laughs> films and i started to watching them and thank you azerbaijan studio film fund i got really um precious films which I am enjoying still watching and I hope mm, we will do something uh, beautiful out of these like films you know there is like really really treasures which I think Europe never seen these films you know and uh, I'm really happy now to discover this too because maybe if I discovered earlier if I watched I wouldn't be so um, involved with which is for me Mm, like I grow to understand our films now I can say you know like mm -hmm. time, time now to see to watch to understand and sometimes like I realized that there was recently a really famous Azerbaijani director died uh, he was his name was Eldar Kuliev he was 80 years and I can imagine he made so many films in his life and I have never seen it you know and uh, now when he's not anymore here physically and mm -hmm. I am like approaching his films while maybe in 
maybe in the past I could come get in touch and understand his view, his like philosophy of making this film. So, but I mean, everything has its own time. So there is like different also Azerbaijani filmmakers who are like now they are really starting to come to the world and to be seen their beautiful works. You know, I'm really happy for this. But if you would select a few elements, what would be very representative for Azerbaijan? I think this is, you know, what we're curious about. Is it like landscape? Is it like human nature relationships? What is it about? What is it? If you would, if you could see, feel it, you know, throughout watching those movies in, in the period that you are mentioning. It's like really, it's about uh, the music because it just directly touched my soul without even, uh, you know, it just film start. And I I'm, was I'm so happy that I was so happy that so many films, like so quality music there, you know, like mm. very deep music. This is like first thing I am just like, wow, wow. And then I even afterwards try to find soundtracks to listen to them because they are so beautiful. And uh, I think there's also, um, cultural elements there involved like uh, uh, people relationships attitude also uh, cultural element like uh, uh, clothes or family atmosphere or friendships that how they like they are their friendship how they work each other like communicate with each other so these are for me um there's like some cultural like language elements which is like so um, you know um it's different i i can't say but it's like through the language you can understand their talking language by language they make understanding something easy i don't know it's like if you are azeri you will understand what they mean but if you are foreigner something there is like some kind of neat um really metaphoric way to explain what they mean because it's so um thin line kind of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. metaphor sarcasm or it's true you know like you have to understand but they are really treasure beautiful stories and also um landscape yeah of course there is a beautiful landscape involved but uh, for me it's like first comes music and then stories and uh, then these costumes you know some costumes are so beautiful like colors are so beautiful you know and it's like really really um, exciting to see this beauty you know mm -hmm. nice extraordinary uh good to hear and also you know you also inspired me to, to check a few and maybe you can give me some recommendations after the session <laughs> yeah sure of course nice and uh, tell me so you you as a as a female female filmmaker did you encounter any challenges in your professional growth i mean uh, i think first time like not like firstly i can't like i think myself as a human and uh, when i go to any any set or any work i see myself as a human and i try um to build relationships in a way that uh, as a human not as a second as a woman of course i know we are so emotional sometimes but uh, and i love this is also like some some uh, like some some of what some treasures like we are emotional and it's so beautiful why not you know but mm -hmm. uh, i also um in the workplace uh, I think I always meet nice people, you know, I can truly say that people whom we can trust and we can work together. And I think it's always um, my intention too to be open and whenever we go to work together, I want to be as a family, you know, like, uh, like um, I had some experience where, uh, you know, uh, I try to be different in a way that I am not because it's supposed to be like that, but it's not my nature. I love that everyone has their own uh, like responsibility and I want to trust them and I want to love what they are doing because we are all part of the, some puzzle, you know, and uh, there is no um, person who is less or more, you know, it's just like everyone fulfills their own uh, 
job, you know, own place. <laughs> so for me, it's like uh, with these ideas, with these intentions, I have gone all this work. So I have always meet nice um, people who are also were supportive to the work which we are doing always, you know. So, I mean, I can say that I always had the support and I am so grateful that, of course, I mean, I have sometimes like mm, getting negative answers, negative experiences, but I take them as a experiences which we need to learn to grow, you know. I don't uh, devalue any experience because afterwards I see this experience as really important experiences that shaped my character, my vision and um, how I want to communicate with people in which way and how I can like uh, improve myself that it will be more smooth, more clear, so like these are like learning steps so for me it's these are really important and i met also people who value these qualities you know so mm -hmm. i have always nice experiences i can say i think it's it's a nice thing to take uh, from this session today you know because any experience we're having we have to think it positively right so if it, if, it, if it was negative then it means we had to go through it to learn something for ourselves to improve our lives or anything else um and then you know and with this type of mindset you know you overcome and you really see the benefits of everything that's happening to you around right exactly exactly because you know i think uh, we always live life like looking back because we are not present most of the time and to exactly. be present especially in a team when there's like a lot of people and you have to be so concentrated on yourself on your vision and uh, to trust everyone but always to be present that you will not miss any uh, any step for yourself and also you will not like um, be angry to anyone else because you somehow felt like you missed something you know like mm -hmm. these are really um important thing that we have to acknowledge that uh, we have to be more uh, like maybe calmer still that we can feel our steps and not to be um, not to you know not to confuse our wor work or confuse our way to the where we want to go you know because uh, especially in film or theater verse there are like a lot of people involved and they are waiting your like direction to do their own job like and uh, you must be more um discipline inside or so somehow um calmer i think for me it's like still and to be calm i am still learning like you know uh, to be still on this works and to have really not to have to enjoy this every step of making these films you know so i think this is yeah to be present to be um to understand that okay let's take one step and then okay we will see what we did and then because if we rush sometimes we make really uh, we can make really um, like so many not right choices which will involve more energy to solve these issues you know in the future so yes. for me yes to try to be present in every second that we will not look back and say oh this 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 like so if i can summarize it i would say just live in the present moment <laughs> yeah i mean this is this is the whole world now like yeah. <laughs> dreaming the live in the present moment but people still need to understand how and uh, how to do this you know like mm -hmm. I'm, i just see that like for example a transcendental meditation david lynch tries to do like uh, involving films and transcendental meditation but for uh, like what I learned uh, is like life can be a meditation and if you don't know how to start you can just slow down you know everything mm -hmm. like you drink tea just try to drink tea very slowly and you will acknowledge every movement of how you drink feel all these moments and like um just everyday moment you know step by step and then uh, to make to take these experiences to the bigger landscape kind of, it will be really a um, very um, nice outcome from the work i think you know mm -hmm. yes.
nicely going from philosophy to to our movies <laughs> but thanks for that i think it's really important to raise awareness about this and uh, it's sometimes we really need to slow down and take things easy and really be conscious about what's happening with us and around us i want to actually go back in time a bit and go to your first movie the the first movie you ever did so i want to know <laughs> uh how did this how this build up from conceptualization to visualization to the final product did you have any aha moments did you have any insights or did you did you take something from your first movie that you're carrying with you throughout uh, you know um, all of the future projects that you're planning i mean like you mean first movie in my filmography or first movie in my life like this is different oh, that's a good question <laughs> i guess filmography yeah mm -hmm. yeah so uh, I think uh, I mean for we when we were young we were doing like uh, it called cinema sport in Azerbaijan or in we're still young. <laughs> yeah, I mean like you were yeah we still young. <laughs> but, like more um, more younger and then like we were doing. Um, cinema sports or now in europe it's called 48 hour films like they okay. will give you some uh, uh, elements and you have to make films about this um, or use these elements in your film so we always we have like creative people around and when we decide let's do something and we just like um, we did like i think it was frogs my first film you know from there huh? it's like frogs which uh, we were in some uh, training in uh, outside of baku and then i always dance we were dancing and then we learned the next day what will be there the elements so we just made all concept built on my dancing something you know like oh and then cool everything came out in a way that it's um it just put together but you know i think uh, i i i call them experimental moments or experimental videos because um film is something kind of these are all what i called my filmography they are built up to make a film but they are all my platform for experimenting to find my voice my genre or uh, like my way to this film you know but I'm also changing, so I cannot say <laughs> what will be the next, you know. Each moment for me, aha moment, like, okay, we made this and wow, it happened, it worked. So let's do that this. And, you know, these creative moments are mostly aha moments. There's like <laughs> one moment, it just constantly repeats itself. <laughs> uh -huh, I see. You are even recognized, you are, you are awarded for, for frogs, for, yeah, for this. I mean, this, this is like, for young people like encouraging <laughs> to do you know to do more films more it's uh, still amazing more. it's still great yeah, don't I mean, be shy course. don't be modest <laughs> of course i mean uh, but you know i i understand now this uh, this moment of also um representation what you have done you know before okay. we were shy and we will hide ourselves in some darkness and we'll say we did something but we are like we did something but now i think and um, uh, like um, because before whatever films i made i was not counting on festival nor on the representations you know mm -hmm. outside because i was loving to make films and i was making the films but um the latest film which did i ever tell you and uh, um this film actually i made with intention to send to the festival because i shot for the short quarantine film festival idea and it went to one to another festival because i put the intention to the festival first of all i also had the idea that uh, i'm doing for the festivals but this is also so like enjoying moment i was like doing by myself at at, like first for myself and then to the festivals but uh, when I was waiting answers it was really nice experience like oh will you, they choose my film or not I mean I haven't had this experience before you know because I never um, 
thought about this way, but now I find like, wow, this is also different experience to go and wait like this heartbeat in different way, you know, like you make mm -hmm. a film in different way, your heartbeat, but when you finish the film, it's in different way. And when you give to the world, it's completely different. So these are all valuable and we have to acknowledge these steps, you know, and try to share our work with the world too, you know. And it, because you're mentioning about your last movie, which is this short uh, two minutes movie, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So I think now it makes sense for, uh, for us to show it to the audience as well. What do you think? Sure, yes, let's do it. Okay, let's let's give me a second and we'll try to thing became different. Since borders were closed, I began to see our home differently. Everything became different. There are so many things that I have never told you. I miss waking up next to you. I miss our mornings. I really do miss our mornings. I still have not got a new chair of the same colour, but you know that I like it this way. To remind myself every day that in many ways we are different, but we can sit at one table and see each other's souls. I prepare two coffees every day, one for you and one for me. I like to begin the day with you. I still see how you move in the kitchen, then all of a sudden you laugh because you got an idea or you saw a good shot. Did I ever tell you? It makes me laugh. How you keep cameras all around the house to not lose any beautiful shots. But the most beautiful shots you don't take because you want to live these moments. I love it so much. Honestly, I don't feel anything about these crystals. But I like to feel your presence in each room. It seems your plants don't like my company. They're changing their colours. Do you tell them stories too? Did I ever tell you? I read your favourite books twice already. Do you know why? To know you better. But I didn't find you there. I miss our long discussions and never agreeing on certain topics. But mostly, I miss our silence together. You know, whatever's happening in the world now, I think it did a good job for us. Yes, I know, we're on different sides of the border, but it's temporary. Now, I can truly see myself. I can see you, and I know what I want from life. Did I ever tell you, I love you so much. All right. So very, very interesting. <laughs> Sorry? We missed a little bit from the beginning. I think internet was not properly working, but... No, I moved it from the beginning and it starts to show, it, it started showing from the beginning. Okay. It's uh, it's very interesting. I think I want you to talk more about how did you come up with this vision, with this idea? Did you like, how does it typically come, right? Do you wake up in the morning like, hey, I'm going to do this? Or is it building up throughout the days, months? Like, I'm actually curious in this kind of small things as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, about this project or in general? About this particular one, since we've seen it. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, April, April, like from 2019, and I think it was 2019 or two, no, 2020 or something like that. I don't mm -hmm. remember it for a year, but mm -hmm. it is not important. So I was like, um, you know, I always write. Like for me, life is poetry. I write constantly. I have so many like notebooks, and I write, but. Um, I read about the like festival make a competition, uh, competition make a film short maximum two minutes, which you have to in one place. And um, if you go out only backyard and um, use your mobile phone. So I said, okay. And then I took a pen and then I don't remember, you know, it's just like when I take a pen, I start to write, it just comes. And then it's like, you know, I think for me, it's always like that. I took small notes which, com which comes to my mind. Like I have this idea and this idea. And then uh, I live with this idea for like two days or I go for long walks. I like to sing this way. So... I came back, I checked again, and I was like, okay, it's it comes more. And um, 
I had a friend who usually uh, like proofreads my work and uh, for the representation or presentation outside. And I asked where he's from because we always work online and he came to be American. But I asked like, just um, like save your voice and record your voice. I want to listen your voice, you know, voice for me important. And uh, he checked my work. He said, like, no, grammatical, everything is correct. And I was like, OK, then it means life sent me you, you know, <laughs> if it's all fine. So let's do it with you. And I really liked his voice. And I asked, like, mm, let's do this. And uh, actually, inspiration came to me from the idea during the quarantine. I read uh, one uh, one story about couple who was left uh, in different countries because of the quarantine and uh, the woman was pregnant but because of the quarantine the man was not allowed even being pregnant was not enough you know and she was like why people you are really negative but be positive look at me i am pregnant i'm still happy you know even yeah. we cannot be together but we enjoying our time and imagining our lives together in the how everything will come out and i find really positive attitude to life that uh, whatever happens we have to look at in more positive way and i really like it, this idea and i think everything came from that point that okay let's put them in different countries and make it like um, this way and then i spent like uh, two three days finding the uh, like uh, angles what i want from uh, shooting mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. which what and then like you know i really like this making films because i two days i was thinking and when i am thinking i'm thinking at night too i am sleeping but i have like notebooks on my <laughs> on my side when i like <laughs> on i will wake up and i will like wow this is pu beautiful i will make this and the next day i will like check it everything i think it was really quick maximum five days i made everything like editing was like nice. two days i spent editing and then um and all was shot on mobile and edited on mobile like uh, it was so quick and i think i feel when the work was so quick easy for me i feel it's it's everything works like you know but sometimes of course i have to stop but this was not this case you know like, yeah. I, why i'm telling this because um in different situations, we need to acknowledge sometimes we need to stop, sometimes everything goes quickly and fastly, and we have to follow this, you know. So, this was one of the moments that everything happened quickly, and it's like a maximum two minutes, but very, um, for me, nice, light story. Which, mm -hmm. when you finish, you have smile on your face, you know. Yeah, <laughs> and I like this. So if you can summarize uh, this movie in one sentence, what would it be? I mean, the title of this, did I ever tell you? Because during the quarantine, <laughs> many people acknowledge that they have never said any good things or mm. never, like never shared their uh, true thoughts or, uh, you know, because of so many reasons. But when life put in a circumstance where there is like, nothing to lose this is like starts the moment did i ever tell you like everyone starts to open up in one or another way to each other you know i think it's not about the, the couple it's also by family to family uh, mothers fathers children's relationships you know so many different kind of partner relationship of course but it's like everything starts with this sentence did i ever tell you Yes, exactly. People to people generally, right? Not only families. So yeah. really a time to acknowledge things and to think about what is important actually for me, you know? The pandemics really show that we need to shift sometimes our uh, things we kind of consider important in our life, right? Yeah. But thank you very much. It was very nice description. Uh, I enjoyed it. And I think it was it was interesting also to hear from you, you know, what did you mean? What was your vision? How did you actually come to this product, right, to some extent? Mm -hmm. so, th so thank you for sharing that with us. I also want to go um, and discuss a bit about another of your movie, which is uh, Blame Me For My Vanishing, right? 
so i want yeah okay blame the silence for my vanishing i forgot the keyword <laughs> i think it's a fiction drama from 2018 right so i want to know what uh, what what is the plot what is the story the message that you want to convey and why does it have the french title and in the meantime i'll be sharing some pictures with our audience to see uh, some fragments yeah, from that movie i mean this film was shot in 2016 where these are all people are my friends and uh, on that time i was working at the theater and i really wanted quite i was questioning like did i need to go to one direction to theater or i can go i need to test myself like if i can handle to make like um, longer films and uh, how it works with myself and with every step you know like from pre-production till the production. So I started like, uh, these are my friends. So I asked one day that, hey guys, um, if I will write the script, will you act on it? Like, will you be acting? And they say like, okay, why not? You know? So, I mean, and I had my ideas of these people's life in my imagination, like, this mm -hmm. is character like that this character is like that so i um wrote script by their character you know like for my idea actually maybe in, i i noticed later that in life they are different people you know but i see them in this way kind of so uh, i uh, so i wrote a script and then uh, we did pre-production period and then we started to shoot. We shoot during 17 days, and um, it's really was a very valuable experience. Yes, I love the mystery of making films. It's completely different than working at the theater. Different, different. I value both, but it's like what I want constantly experience. It's a uh, more I found in uh, cinema, you know, because here you grow fastly in in many levels at the same time and there's like so many things and i love this disciplined work in a way you know <laughs> in the film film what we are doing so for me it was like really nice experience to uh, test myself and i love um, but you know this was the exactly what i mentioned before this film it's like 35 minutes and um because of license, I uh, we I can't put on internet that many people can see this film. You know, there's <laughs> license works, music with, with music. So, but for me, uh, when we send this festival, we we never get any festivals. And then I was questioning because of time, it's, it's like 35 minutes, also not proper time for the many festivals. So so many things like. I didn't count before because my idea was to make a film to see if I can make like a long uh, medium format film like medium not mm -hmm. medium format but medium lens film so yes I saw yes and with having no intention to the festivals so it never went to any festival it showed in um, like um, it showed premiered in prague also premiered in azerbaijan also showed in few places in prague and um, but it's like never went to festivals because of so many reasons which i wasn't aware because i didn't focus on that area you know but mm -hmm. now i am like i know what to notice one when, when you work on this like you know Mm -hmm. this direction mm -hmm. that's uh, that's very interesting and why does it have the french title like yeah. do you have any connection to france <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm, you know i i uh, i mean uh, i never used music in general in the film when i use music in the film it's in a way when we listen to the music i didn't want music to be a background or supportive because i love this uh, because we have uh, some sound all the time around us and i love i want them to be natural way of you know it's like we don't listen every day to music all the time so in my films i want to listen music when i listen to music you know mm -hmm. as in my life so i just sit and listen to music you know and so 
and uh, when I use the uh, this when I use this uh, like music and I use the, this uh, oh I I forgot the question so but I understand I remember now so why <laughs> a French title yes because uh, French language it has this musicality you know I use English language and French language you know so not to because English doesn't have what French has. You know, uh -huh. and, uh, I had already French character there, so I saw like, okay, I will do um, French language, and then uh, in the middle, I just noticed that um, I just noticed that uh, the film has diff had different name title, but at the end of the when she reads the poem and uh, when the title came out like surface that it is the title of the film, you know. And I really love this title because it doesn't give you any answer. What is this about film? <laughs> you don't know. It's just like blame the silence for my vanishing. Like in which context? What do you mean? Like, so, I mean, I like this ambiguity, you know, like, uh, so it's somehow for me interesting. And I love when the title speak for itself too, you know, not just one word, but there is some something calling you to go with this journey with this word you know with this statement somehow so somehow it happened in this way that film choose itself that i want this name and i'm like okay you know i think that sometimes uh, i i just allow film to be created through me i love yeah. something but i know that film has it is own like it's already done somewhere so i just let it be again done through me in the material world so this is like i try to do like more and to be not control everything but just step back a little bit so film can yeah. make itself it is then it's like it's then it's like more and more deeper maybe more um, has more quality on it that you know this is beautiful name and in every language even in french or in english it comes the um, it comes beautifully i like it and that's the reason they uh, i choose to have french language and uh, <laughs> and and to make the name is from the poem which uh, one of the characters read you know mm -hmm. okay and talking about ambiguity actually um like people generally understand movies differently right and like why is that is it because they're not that exposed to them or that's the actual purpose of films like why is the case <laughs> i mean i like the idea of what you said that it's because of uh, maybe purpose of the films this maybe who knows you know uh, different different directors like um, says different words you know for this like for me it's like uh, you know there's something wants to be born through me and i let it through let it born you know i and uh, for example i like to read sometimes a review about my film then i can understand what people understood there what they saw there actually because uh, as every individual being has its own world, you know, the, even we speak sometimes the same language, we have different mental world, you know, we yeah. understand differently, we experience life differently, and yeah. uh, we see the same thing differently too. And in this way, I think that because uh, when you are a film director, you watch film completely different and you watch like either cinematography or script or all of them together or like, you know, it's, in, it's like different. But when um, you just want to go and enjoy film and for you films are entertainment, uh, so you just go and watch the film and then maybe you see the beauty and content like if you touched if the film touched you, words touched you or not, somehow like that. But I like this idea that everyone sees film differently. It opens up like completely a um, new way where each person can explore themselves through the film. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. like when you watch film, just you feel something different and maybe you can work on this feeling, what it is, why I am feeling this, you know. So mm. I think this is this, but I, I like that 
and there is so many themes and so many people you know to see differently it's wonderful and there is opinion everywhere right so <laughs> the truth is out there <laughs> yeah i mean yes it's like uh, of yeah. course if uh, it's a, if we talk about professional level there is like of course critics write very um like very long work about discussion from angles uh, analysis like you know but uh, sometimes uh, if you are not for give you you just want to enjoy film and this is not important for you for you important of course characters actors or uh, the music like everyone is different and everyone focus on something that is important to them and this is beautiful i think that we are all different you know and unique at the same time <laughs> different and unique um so talking about actors actors actually uh, how do you choose your actors are you like do you do you make a casting are you asking your friends family <laughs> how do you choose and when do you know then this is the right person for the for the for the vision that i have i mean i think uh, i can talk where i am now because before the film which i made i wrote the script directly for these people you know so mm -hmm. For me, I really, I walk a, a lot and I see people. And if you go the same places, I see like some people so beautiful, which I think uh, what uh, Robert Brisson used, he used sometimes uh, ordinary people and he will, he will say that they have their charm, that mm -hmm. so captivating that he, he was using these ordinary people and i think for me too sometimes because um, i see people and i see already story that where i can use these people you know and i was like okay if i will make this story i should come to this place ask these people to be uh -huh. uh, like acting in this film because um for me film also physicality you know i want uh, to explore the character physical way to while we are watching the the film you know like if i have seen the same um, actor several times in different story it's not interesting because for me it's not interesting because i want kind of through the camera to see the uh, movements uh, the talk the eyes like the hands like everything so important that i want to explore new characters each time you know and not only the story all around but also the person which is playing some character there you know so i think um i really would use uh, different you know but this is like my opinion or my comment or my state today you know i don't know what will be in the future and uh, you know but of course i say that there are some actors or actresses which really i enjoyed um, watching different films, for example, Romy Schneider, uh, her, this something very mystical about her that in every film I want to watch her, you know, because I saw many films uh, and I like it, uh, her so much that I went to see all her films where she was like yes. acting, you know, or mm -hmm. like uh, Audrey Hepburn, you know, also there is like uh, sometimes these characters that I really want to see more of their work or Mastroianni, you know, I feel sometimes that I am kind of from old school, you know, <laughs> because there are like new actors coming, coming and they are so beautiful and so good work doing, but for me still this, uh, I haven't gone there, maybe I haven't come there where they are, but I like still these, you know, characters where um, in each film they are they themselves, but not at the same time. And I like mm -hmm. that we still can explore the same like personality in a different way. And I love this, this. so if I will see someone in, in future like acting this way maybe i will use these people in my film so you le letting yourself uh, have the freedom to feel whatever you feel at that particular moment and choose accordingly right <laughs> yes yes because life is so like that momently changing and i think this is the beautiful moment like to follow the present and find the to live in the right present time. moment just as we were talking <laughs> I mean, we are circling in the same area, I think, like present yeah. moment, which is opens us and uh, more possibilities in any time of any, any, like whenever we want to something to do 
new we have to come to the present then we see new possibilities you know yeah okay i'm actually quite curious because we are now still facing the pandemics and um so did the current pandemics affect your creative thought process or let's say your vision how you want to do your movies going forward let's say the filmmaking uh, overall i mean i would say that i'm just grateful for the pandemic because uh, I came to Baku and uh, I met Azerbaijan cinema and this is really important step for me, for my inner world uh, to come to the roots and to find the uh, new, like you have changed and you are ready to see these films in a new way, with new eyes. And I love this and I'm really grateful, of course, to see these films and to make something out of beautiful, you know. I want uh, also to share uh, with the world these treasure films, you know. So I will think about this in a new way that way, how we can make screenings in Prague, maybe, you know, these beautiful films, you know. So, and this is like one of the, and I think uh, like I can go on to say so many positive aspects, of course, you know. And I think I like uh, I like to acknowledge that um, this is the really uh, important moment for whole humanity to, uh, to acknowledge that something new is coming and we have to be ready for this new, even to embrace we don't know it. what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. I'm here. Do you hear me? <laughs> I, I, yeah, you're okay. Sometimes I'm losing. Okay. Yes, yes. Connection issues, but we're still here. That's 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 what's important. All right. So uh, I actually want to talk about about the Facebook page that you have. I think it's called Cinema as an Experience. You you. But, this is and I want because of the pandemic, we didn't go <laughs> alive. Uh -huh. Yes, please. So do you have a page which are running called Cinema as an Experience. So I want to know more about this page. What are you trying to convey? What messages and how do you want to, you know, what do you want to teach uh, the people that are following that page? I mean, I, I we made this page like many years ago just for us to share our view on cinema commentaries or analysis film or to suggest each other to watch some films but after a while i mean uh, for me it's, it became very important like when i had time where i was like really upset about <laughs> films so i said like okay i have to do but i still love to watch films but i am not watching as uh, often or more as before so i came up with different idea that way i can use films in different content so mm -hmm. it was like um, to use cinema, how to make, uh, to see, to watch film that will allow us to communicate with ourselves, to go deeper and try to heal ourselves, our bodies. Because when we watch films, we don't watch only with eyes, mental, we watch with body, you know, and with our heart. So alive that, um, yes, by heart too. And body is so alive that it can tell you afterwards, like if something touched you or something like hurting you in your body so you can work on this through the watching films you know just by bringing intention in the beginning that i want to work on something let's see and i think uh, this was the intention for my work that people who will come to see the films they will not be aware what film they are watching you know in the beginning like when they are coming they will get to know when they are already here which is many which is maybe risk for somebody who don't want to go to cinema without knowing which film he or she will see you know it's like yeah. you are pushing people to the unknown and it's like crazy for some people that oh wait wait a minute i don't want <laughs> what film you will show am i ready for this film you know so somehow to work experiencing something different you know so mm -hmm. this was but um I mean, I am just waiting when the, everything will be more calm, more open, then we are back to cinemas or we are back to theaters where we can really organize and uh, screen films 
and then see how it will be you know it is just more on a theoretical way but i will see and more feel more with people and with the experience when we are like already doing this work so for me it's now pilot work you know which is on my idea and it's like waiting their time to to come and to do their job you know please do let us know because we need some cinema therapy in our lives <laughs> yeah exactly cool cool so yeah so i i actually want to go ahead with the next section that i have prepared there are some goodies i have prepared for us uh, today i want to go into the section of truth and myths about the film industry so i really hope that you can shed some light for us and for our audience today and uh yeah we'll we'll see if um We'll see if it's true or not, basically. <laughs> so, um, the first, uh, the first, uh, uh, the first sentence or something that we hear a lot nowadays is uh, the fact that you need a lot of money to make a film, a movie. Is that true or not? No, <laughs> no, because oh. like uh, it's like it depends what kind of film you make. It depends on author. It's like it depends so many factors that, like you know. Uh, it can be yes and no you know if you want to shoot in hollywood they will say definitely yes but if you shoot in uh, different countries or in um, like different circumstances like if it's the story so strong like you can shoot on mobile and you can still be really nice i think it depends you know uh, because i can remember where the character said that you don't need a lot of money don't wait like if you want to make a film just go work wherever you can find the job and then you can do you know work and i think uh, it's really depends on director and their vision you know because sometimes the work is so um money based because it's, there is so artificial stuff that affects me so then uh, you can't do without money you know it's yeah. just like you will uh, you will like lose your time so i think yes and no it depends who and when and what they are doing you know i see well thanks for that and actually talking about director so a director should know how to do everyone's job on the set is that uh... <laughs> i mean no why? why i don't know why this precondition is is existing like he's a director he should know how to do this and that and that he should like instruct everyone what to do <laughs> not is everyone, that true? actually i mean i think everyone knows already their own job you just uh, build the system how they supposed to work or actually it's a director assistant like who mm -hmm. does this work like guiding everyone and responsibilities who knows what to do you know yeah. i mean uh, i don't uh, let me see i don't know a lot of about uh, what i don't know like uh, catering food i don't know anything you know about <laughs> so many things so i just trust that they, my food will be good you know so yeah <laughs> but, but, uh, but i don't know also about uh, for example gaffer work they have so many this uh, um, this technical stuff that they do do so i just trust them they will do their job best you know so mm. i think it's it's completely not true you know it's i say no <laughs> Okay, and now what we're also interested in, in is the fact that the only way to become a director is to start as a personal assistant. Is that the case? No. Okay. Let's let's say let's say uh, Bruno uh, Bruno Dumont, French film director, who started, who was like philosopher at the university and he, then he decided to make films and he made the films you know and then uh, maybe um, let's see who else like i can remember now that no i mean answer no personal director i mean it's different you know life is so different and everyone's path is so unique that mm -hmm. you can't put you know any answer to anyone and i think these are completely myths that <laughs> try to you know I mean, maybe scare people, you know, scare people not to take this path, you know, because there is a lot said, you know, it's it's like this, 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 but actually 
I think it depends on uh, director's attitude and character. If they can handle, if they are ready to this work, so they will go on without any, you know, like even if they will see some obstacles, but they will just continue to go because they know this is the this is their way, you know, they mm -hmm. their path. So I think. <laughs> okay. No. Thank you for clarifying that. And then another <laughs> interesting uh, question. Uh, documentaries are boring and long. <laughs> are they actually boring and long or it depends or not? Like, <laughs> But everybody thinks that they're just too extensive, that they're very monotone. Is that really the case or can you make a documentary no, very exciting? I, mean, I think I think there's like some, uh, I had this, uh idea too like i didn't like how i have seen some documentaries where it was like camera was always shaking and interviews you don't understand what is going what is happening so i didn't like documentaries but once i was invited by, uh, to see premiere of a uh, uh, russian film director uh, vitaly mansky who made a uh, uh, whose film Under the Sun about uh, North Korea, I think. And mm -hmm. then I saw so beauty and the new way of making documentary films. And then I saw um, the Great Museums, uh, Great Museum film, which is also documentary, where it's like no interviews, everything put there, and you just like seeing, you know, you just observing everything. And I love this attitude. I think it's also depends of directors, you know, it doesn't matter documentary or fiction. And now actually on the latest year, there there is like so mixture of documentary and fiction. Sometimes people don't understand which one is documentary or it is like <laughs> fiction. So I think, yes, it depends again on director and their work, you know. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. I think uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to hear it from, from a filmmaker perspective as well, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, another interesting point. Only the most talented people make it in the film industry. <laughs> I think uh, most talented is like most courageous, maybe most brave ones. Like it's not about talent. Edison said it's like one person talent, 99 person of the work, you know, uh, if you put work on it and if you have courage, you will make it. And it's not about talent. It's just about you. Well, there's a bit of talent, I guess, but the hard work is really the one that should be there, right? <laughs> I, I just want, not hard work, but the work which we do, which sometimes mm -hmm. we think it's hard, but once we're there, we forget about eating time. And yeah. it can't be said it's hard. It can't be right. just so joyful. It's flowing. It's flowing. <laughs> yes, yes, it's flowing. Everything is like so right that it's not hard work. Of course, there are like a sleepless night, long hour work shift. Yeah. But the happiness, it's so rewarding that uh, this is like, it's just okay, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for uh, for answering this uh, this question. I mean, not questions, more like statements, like clarifying the statements for us. Um, you know, on this note, I want to actually ask you. You know, because we discussed um, uh, we discussed about your movies, about the vision, about how about your growth. You know, in time in within within the years. So, what do we uh, what can we expect from Valida in the next few years professionally? I mean, yes, professionally, this is good accent, actually, <laughs> because uh, the, I am now actually starting to make really films. Mm -hmm. Because now I am trying, um, uh, like, we have a project, which is I am going to make a documentary film now. Uh, Not long and boring. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> I have to still find the vision with which way it will look like, but I know that uh, content is so important to me uh, and the uh, importance for humanity, this mm -hmm. work that I really uh, want to do this work. It's about family constellation, a therapeutical method found by Bert Hellinger and uh, co-developed by Sophie Hellinger. 
his wife. So for me, uh, this is like my uh, beginning, I think, for all the past led me to be here now and then to do this work because um, I think it's going to be so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Because I've read in a, in one of your recent articles that um, after the movie in 2018, I think the the one uh, the, with the French title, uh, you you were mentioning that uh, you've changed as a person and you want to make positive movies and uh, movies that give people hope. So is that still relevant? <laughs> um, I mean, I I think like uh, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I was saying that I was trying to judge that because I was angry, you know, when you trust to the films and you watch like so many films, so many and all are like, you know, heavy and they are, of course, they are changing us. But uh, when we are young, we believe that life is like that. And I mean, I was, of course, angry that you trust to the films and they are kind of betraying you, telling that life is heavy, life is that, that, and then you have your own experience where you find something beautiful, something really uh, joyful about life. And then, uh, you know, you trust this kind of source and then you see like, okay, this is like really not working because I understood that it's so connected to the director. It's so connected to their vision. It's so connected to their experiences. It's so connected to their life. So, yeah. and then uh, it's like, it's changed that, okay, I, I mean, I'm a different person. I'm a different character and I want to make different films that uh, will explore different dimension in the inner world of people, you know? So for me, it's like, yes, I want to do different. Uh, at least we can understand that, you know, I think um, there is a Japanese uh, animator, animation, uh, um, I will, famous animator who most of his films, uh, he says like, uh, I am trying to give this, you know, in his cartoons, anime, there are the really moments where you observe beauty of nature in spite of yeah. that there is a war or something behind, you know. But And he said that I want to give these uh, sparks of hope, of love, that there is still life is rewarding as itself, you know. I think this is beautiful um, statements. I can't remember his uh, name now, but um, Miyazaki, oh, yes. Uh -huh. yes, okay. yes, yes. So, yes, I think I want also to explore something new, you know, I want mm -hmm. to do something new. So We definitely understood that you are uh, very much experimenting in every aspect of your life. And uh, I, am, I embrace that and I salute that. And I really hope that with your experimentation, you will find new ways of doing things or you'll find more inspiration and more creativity to really drive all your ideas to, to, to reality. <laughs> Can you imagine it's been more than one hour than we talk? It's been like one minute for me. <laughs> I mean, it, it was really nice, um, nice talk, nice conversation. Of course, for me to to see my past and then, uh, you know, sometimes we, we have to see our small steps, you know, whatever it is that um, maybe it is small, but it's really built up made me who I am today and then they are really not small steps actually they are really a valuable steps that makes who we are today and I think um, this kind of conversation um, allows us to look at ourselves and understand that there is so much more we are going but it is nice we have done this and it's just nice and good that uh, we can trust more to do now you know I appreciate you saying that because I think a lot of people will relate with uh, with these phrases. So <laughs> I want to ask you, maybe in the end, if you have a message to our audience, if you want to share some last thoughts, feel free. Um, I think uh, I will just say that follow your heart, you know, like if you will follow your heart, yeah, you will find a really more precious answer, which non books or films can give you you know because you are so unique that your answers only comes from your own heart because 
it will be suiting you and it will suiting your path and your method. And uh, this is this. And I also would like to, because in Azerbaijan or in Muslim countries today is a Ramadan, I want to say happy holiday for all the people who are celebrating this uh, Ramadan. So that's it. And I wish, I am also saying thank you to you, you know, like uh, it was really nice talk and I really enjoyed to have this time with you. And I also thank people who were watching us, you know, of course, if they have questions. Yeah, let's see if they have any questions or not. <laughs> Um, not uh, not as of now, but uh, you know that means we'll have to meet again, and we'll uh, we'll definitely uh, we'll collect those and uh, we'll answer all of them. Uh, but on this high note, I really want to thank you for your time. It was a great collaboration with you. Even prior to the actual session, uh, I really uh, really enjoyed your energy, your uh, your optimism. <laughs> I look forward to talk to you again at some point, and uh, I wish you all the best in your endeavors. And I do hope that all of your ideas come true and you're happy with the final results. And not only professional, but also personally. So good luck in everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Okay. Thank you, guys. Those that were watching, uh, we will see each other uh, at um, another session of the V-Day Hour. Thank you. Thank you.